Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast produced by Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. I am Bob, and I'm exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. Today, where I'm joined by Richard Kados. He is the founder and CEO of Sleep Ovation Mattresses. We're going to talk about their adult mattress and about their baby mattress, but he's also going to give us the inside scoop on the mattress industry overall. So it'll be worth your while. Please w- welcome along with me, Richard Cotis. Welcome to the program, Richard Cotis. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for inviting me. The baby, the baby infant mattress. Uh, this mattress is unlike anything I've ever seen. Uh, what were your initial goals uh, with this infant toddler mattress, I guess should, I should call it? Sure. So the original idea for this literally came from uh, pediatricians. Um, and they were looking, um, they told us, and you know, I wasn't very familiar with this at the time, that um, a significant problem with newborns is a development of what's called plagiocephaly or flathead syndrome. And you, you know, you'll see um, occasionally, actually a lot, you'll see infants wearing um, helmets, these like sure, white yes. plastic helmets. And yep. those are designed to correct for this phenomenon called flathead syndrome. So, so let me take you back a little in history and tell you how, you, how we got here. Um, and, and in about uh, going back uh, 17, 18 years, there was a very high incidence of SIDS yes. um, occurring in the population. And that stands for sudden infant death syndrome. And nothing's a bigger horror. Right. I mean, you can imagine it's the exactly. ultimate horror losing a baby in their sleep. And there was thought to be a high correlation between sleeping on a soft mattress and kids developing SIDS. And there's a lot of theories about it, believe it or not, because it's obviously something that's very hard to test. There is no definitive known cause of SIDS. However, a very high correlation between soft bedding, loose bedding, soft items in the bed and SIDS. So the American Academy of Pediatrics put out a safe sleep initiative that said, children should be put to bed on firm mattresses with no bumpers, no, you know, anything soft in there. Great. What happened? The incidence of SIDS dropped tremendously. Super great news. I mean, you could ask for right, nothing better. Right. However, you know, I'm, I'm a big one here in understanding the con- what's called the law of unintended consequence. And a consequence of this is that children were now being put to bed on their sleep on their backs. So not only was it firm mattresses, but they were to be put to bed on their backs, not on their stomachs. Yep. So they're now being put to bed, bed on their backs. And because they're sleeping on a very firm mattress, there's a high pressure point on the infant's head. And the thought is, is that an infant that's, you know, zero to three months, especially might occur up to six months, have very soft, malleable heads. Right. And this was causing flat spots. And so what's happened, if you can believe these numbers, and there, you know, we talk a lot about epidemics and pandemics recently, but right. there is an epidemic of flat head syndrome or plagiocephaly in newborns. In the US, the number is considered to be between 20 to 30%. I mean, you're talking about a million out of close to 3.75, 3.8 million births of children have discernible levels of plagiocephaly and flathead syndrome. Now, in the old days, it was thought, okay, it's just cosmetic. There'd be a lot of guilt from parents that they didn't want this cosmetic problem. You know, now there's a debate whether, you know, it's also contributing to potentially learning um, delays. Now, most doctors will say it's a chicken and egg that would ever cause the child to be more prone to plagio, cause the learning problems and mm. developmental dislays. I'm sure enough, don't have enough experience to weigh in on that. I'm just, you know, presenting it. But sure. the bottom line is we don't need to have kids with deformed heads. So we looked at, you know, the pediatrician said, you know, this is a, you know, maybe you guys, this design of yours will help this. 
And we looked at it and sure enough said, yeah. Um, and so we created an infant mattress um, and a toddler mattress. It's a two-sided mattress that's designed to mitigate the development of plagiocephaly or flathead syndrome and doing it very similar to what we do with adults, obviously with a lot of differences, but right. creating one inch square pressure element, you know, individual um, mattresses so that if there is a high pressure zone when they're lying on their back, it takes that load and distributes it to the other little elements that are around. So it distributes that pressure zone. And, you know, with our internal testing, you know, we've seen, you know, 25 to 35 percent pressure reductions over and obviously being done with, you know, anatomically correct dolls over, um, you know, conventional mattresses. Um, so, you know, it's a best guess that this should substantially mitigate plagiocephaly. Um, uh, Richard, Richard, where's it, where was this uh, study being done? So several things are happening. And we've done internal testing. We've worked with Seattle Children's Hospital to develop a study uh, for the mitigation, whether this works to mitigate plagio. The downside to that study is it's going to take several years. Sure. So in lieu of that, we're not going to hold this back. Um, I mean, that's just a confirmation study. I mean, you can imagine how complex it is in the world of COVID to try to do a yes. test on infants and newborns. So that's actually been delayed because of COVID, yep. because you can't, you can't recruit patients very easily. Um, so, um, so that's delayed. But in the meantime, we're moving towards FDA approval of this mattress um, for uh, mitigating plagiocephaly. And it's a rather complex process just not to mitigate, you know, not, not, I'm sorry, not to minimize this. I mean, there are literally hundreds of pages you can imagine. Sure. I mean, people are now getting pretty familiar with FDA approval for drugs. Well, it's not that hard, but filing a 510K um, clearance for, you know, an infant mattress, which has never been done before. Um, and we hope to have this in the next, you know, the FDA stamp of approval, hopefully, although it keeps getting, you know, regulatory delays, you know, nothing sure. simple in this yep. world. Yep. But, you know, we hope to have this in you know, the outset four months, hopefully in two to three months. Awesome. Yeah. Now, now plagiocephaly, it can vary from kind of a mild form to the point where it's such a deformity happens that, that they actually have to wear a helmet, correct? Well, it's even worse than that. In the really severe cases, they have to perform skull surgery. Oh, really? So, yeah, it's really, you know, you know, uh, you know, one of the experts we work with at, you know, Seattle Children's Hospital performed literally, I think, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of these surgeries. Oh but, it, but that's, that's really the, you know, let, let's, let's hope that nobody's, you know, nobody we're, we're, we're viewing in this audience, you know, gets to that level, but yes, it can involve surgery. Um, it, you know, for severely, I mean, you can go on the web and research and you'll see the cases of severe deformation. Um, but, uh, you know, it's our goal to, you know, substantially reduce, you know, with the ultimate goal of hopefully one day eliminating plagio as being a, you know, predominant uh, um, thing that parents have to now worry about. I mean, they worry about enough being a new parent right? and having to worry about, you know, this. And, What's interesting, Bob, is that the people at Seattle that see literally thousands of cases of this a year um, will tell you that the, you know, parents come in and, and their biggest problem is that they have overwhelming guilt. Sure. You, know, you, you wouldn't yeah. believe that, but they just yeah. say, I should have done something different. Right. And they're always saying, there's nothing you did wrong. Right. But I get it. You know, you don't want your kid to grow up with a, you know, a, you know, a, a deformed head. Yeah. For, for no reason. You know, yeah. Uh, actually, Brad talks about his brother who I think they call, this is very uh, not appropriate, but they called him like anchorhead. I mean, <laughs> and his, his hair grew over it. Thank God. But, um, and um, another friend, his, his child has two and I mean, he's an adult now, but yeah, they, they all have that, that guilt. So, um, 
Are there any other companies providing anything similar? No, no. There, oh. and, and one of the reasons Seattle wanted to pair, you know, team up with us in this study is that there are companies that offer some kind of active intervention, putting your head, you know, strapping the head in something while the infant sleeps. Oh my God. Or, or, you know, or some special and, and, and believe it or not, the um, FDA has said like, you know, wedge cushions and plagio cushions should not be used. They put out a warning on this because they consider them to increase SIDS risk. So right. one, of, one of the reasons Seattle was excited about this is that it's a passive intervention. All you're right. doing is putting your kid to sleep on the mattress. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's not like you're doing, trying to do all this stuff to mitigate it. And the, the risk is more pronounced in preemies. Um, and preemies have become a bigger part of the new births, you know, because have. of, yeah. So, so it, it's a catch 22. Um, but again, let's go back to the good news was, is that SIDS has been substantially reduced. Right. Right. Oh, I remember that error very, very well because I was having kids there too. So um, I've seen your mattress. It seems as though you have different foams on one, on one side for the infant, one side for the toddler. I mean, densities, it seems like. It seems like the, the infant foam might be a little denser. Am I wrong? Yes, that's correct. So, so what we do is we use what's called an ILD. We talked about it, or, you know, we've talked about where it's, it's a measurement of the stiffness of the foam. We sure. use the stiffest possible foam for the infant, which is about an ILD, roughly 65. Um, now, normally in, in a sheet foam mattress, you know, your baby on that would have a very high pressure riser. But because we break these up into individual like one inch cubes, one inch cushions on top of an individual spring, the spring is taking the load instead of the foam. Oh, and sure. the foam is going to maintain its very flat shape. And the reason that's important is if the, the infant was to flip and be face down, you don't want the foam to envelop the nose and gotcha. potentially create a breathing block. Gotcha. However, what's a big, huge advantage of our design is that right next to that little one inch cushion are air channels on both sides. So we provide you know, the highest airflow and breathability of an infant mattress yet providing a technique to mitigate plagio. Um, look, obviously you never want, so, so that's what we do on the, on the infant side. Yes. Now you flip it over. Let's say an infant becomes one year old. They move into toddlerhood, whatever that exact date is. Sure, right. right. You know. so, so the risk of developing plagio pretty much goes down exponentially at six months and it's pretty much gone at a year. Um, although it's mostly gone at six months. And the risk of an infant dying from SIDS goes down exponentially at three to six months and is pretty much gone at a year. I mean, obviously there's always the exception, but, yeah. but statistically it's gone. So at this point, when you now have a toddler, there's a different concern. You want the baby to be much more comfortable sleeping. So imagine if you put your toddler on that same infant mattress. Now you've got him on this super set, you know, he's sleeping on this super firm mattress. If it was a regular sheet foam mattress and what it's not. So he's a, he or she is a not comfortable and B we're not doing anything for spinal line. So when it becomes a toddler and you flip the mattress over, we now have designed it to be both softer, more comfortable and keep the spine in the same type of alignment that we do with adults. And there's a couple of added things. On the toddler side, because we're now not worried about breathability as much, um, we put a waterproof cover on because they're prone to a lot more accidents as you potty sure. train them, yep. et cetera. Yep. Um, where that's not the case, the infant side, the mattress is water resistant, um, but is breathable. Again, you can put your, you can do a face plant and breathe into that mattress, which is we consider crucial, you know, to help mitigate. Uh, uh, SIDS risk. Again, unknown what causes SIDS, but that's one of the concerns. Which leads me to my next point. Um, you know, your mattress is made in the USA, correct? And yes. uh, we're worried about chemicals. Uh, your little baby or infant or 
toddler is breathing in that chemical all night long. I mean, they're in formative years. Yeah. Um, so how do you guide against that, protect against that? No, great question. So, so there's three main, you're absolutely right. You know, you don't want them living on a chemical, you know, breathing in a chemical right. cesspool, so to speak. So we start, and a lot of this comes in, so the FDA is asking the same questions. So that, that's a good question because sure. I'm dealing with that now with the FDA. So we start with the textiles that are what are called Okio Text certified. So the textiles are, are made to a standard where none of the components are both a health hazard or an off-gassing hazard. And, you know, feel free to OEKO-TEX if any of your, your listeners want to look that up. You can see how strict the standard this is. Sure. So any textiles in our, in our mattress are made to that standard. Next, we come to the foam. And you're right. Okay, foam. So we conform to what's called the CertiPure USA standard, which is a standard that is, again, um, that there's no ozone depleting elements, there's no off gassing, uh, there's no toxic chemicals like formaldehyde, believe it or not, that all can come into play in a, so, so our foams are made by one of the, if not the, you know, one, if not the biggest USA manufacturer of foams under a sort of pure USA standard. So now in addition to that, what else would be in the mattress that could be a potential hazard? Well, adhesives. You have to have some level of adhesives in there. Sure. And our adhesives are made to a, um, a Gold Guard uh, um, a standard, uh, which is also an outgassing that shows that there's no VOCs or no outgassing from any of the adhesives. So it's a gold, gold guard standard. Um, so let me just, I think I might have pronounced that wrong. Uh, believe it or not, um, Green Guard. Uh, Green Guard. I think I just printed. Yeah, Gold Green Guard. I, I got that. Yeah, you got it right. So it's Green yeah, Guard. That part of yeah. It. So right. I, I got. I, I was confusing all these standards. So a Gold Green Guard standard that has no outgassing. So you now have certifications on everything that the FDA wants, and also we want. You have a supply chain that's only in the USA from all these, so you know that none of these standards are phony um, mm -hmm. or are made up or are phony certificates. You know, it was similar to what happened with COVID with, you know, phony N95s coming in that are stamped N95. Right, Nobody right, was certified. Exactly. They were coming from overseas. Yes. So a similar concern here. It's very easy to stamp things on there. It's more difficult to actually have the underlying, underlying certification. Just a couple more questions. Uh, so what sizes are the mattresses available in? Yeah, so in the infant, in the um, uh, baby size, we have a standard. And the standard is uh, what our size is 51.75 by 27.75 by 5.75. And just so you understand, um, that is regulated. It's not technically regulated, but we're required under, you know, federal guidelines to make a mattress that fits snugly to a, a crib. And oh, that sure. standard, yeah, that standard, if you really want to get technical, it's called ASTM F2933-19 standard <laughs> um, that, that regulates size so that there's no gaps. You don't want any gaps between right. the mattress and the crib because gotcha. that is considered potentially, you know, choking makes, risk, makes you know, and, and stuff. Um, at the same time, we also offer the mattress in a mini size, which is uh, the mini is 37.75, 27.75 by 5.75. And that's for people that might keep in small apartments and stuff that don't want a full size crib and keep more of a, I guess, for bassinet type of uh, oh, you know, yeah. mini crib next to their, you know, a lot of that's when the baby's in the same room and you can't put a full crib. But otherwise, full cribs are, you know, cribs and mattresses are, crib, cribs for sure 
have a requirement that they're to federal standards. A little dirty secret I'll tell you is that if you have people listening and they're looking to buy a crib, you can be pretty comfortable. You can buy any crib you want because it's all to that standard. Gotcha. It's all manufactured. So you, you're not at risk with a $200 crib, even though you may like a $2,000 crib, feel free, buy mm. either one. Sure. For safety and, and level. Can, can the mattresses be reused? Let's say you have one child and another child comes along. Sure. About a quarter of infant mattresses, best guess, I mean, on these statistics are reused or recycled to other, you know, other of your kids. Sure. I highly don't recommend going on a used marketplace and buying a crib mattress. Yeah, yeah. You don't even consider that. There's regulations against doing that, but that doesn't mean people don't list them all the time on Craigslist and other things. So, um, yeah, but there, there's no reason. I mean, one of the benefits of our mattress is that we have a zip off cover. So you take the cover off, you put it in the machine wash, machine wash it and put it back on. And so between kids, you can do that. Um, and it's, you know, some people can buy a separate cover even. So while you're washing mm -hmm. one, you put it on. And, you know, I, sure. I mean, I have, I have, you know, my, my grandson is the first person on this mattress. Oh, cool. He's now, he's now eight months old and I'm happy to say he has a very round head. Ah. And the <laughs> incredible part though, is he was born almost two months premature. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it was, it was a worry. A good test. Um, yeah, it was a good worry. I wasn't anxious to use my own grandson right, as a right. test. And I've got another one due in two weeks from a different child. So oh, congratulations. Uh, that mattress is already set up. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So these mattresses are available to the public now? Yes. yes. Okay. So at your website, sleepovation.com, they can buy Sleepovationbaby.com. Oh, baby. Oh, Oh, yes. Ask. Yes. Uh, I mean, we, we will link them shortly, but right now the two websites to the sleepovation.com is the adult mattress site, sleepovationbaby.com, you know, no spaces in there is the infant mattress website. Very good. Well, I've got to say it, Richard, you are a genius when it comes to the mattress business. I, I wouldn't go that far. You, but. you are the guy. So uh, <laughs> thank you so much for taking time to cover these subjects. I, I think they were going to be very helpful to people, really helpful to me, really explain some things to me. And uh, so uh, go to his website. You can go to sleepovation.com for the adult mattress. And you can go to sleepovationbaby.com for the infant and toddler ma mattress. So thank you, Richard, for joining us. Thanks, Bob. It's been great talking with you. Thanks again.